That's why what you're about to see is so poignant. It is the earliest known video by the group that became Nirvana before Cobain's soul had been destroyed by drugs. Here's Lauren Terry. I don't really know what to say. I feel the same way you guys do. This was the message Courtney Love recorded for thousands of mourners gathered in Seattle Sunday to pay tribute to her husband, Kurt Cobain. But he played guitar and sang. I feel so honored to be near him. Eric Harder was one of the many people deeply affected by Cobain's suicide. Eric met Cobain in 1988 when the singer-songwriter was first putting together the band that would ultimately become Nirvana. I was introduced to uh, Kurt Cobain and Chris Novoselic and Dale Krober, who were at that time billed as Ted Ed Fred. Uh, we had a, a fantastic quick introduction and then just the next day we were off running up to uh, the Tacoma World Theater to put on this big show. And Eric Harder managed an electronics store in Cobain's hometown of Aberdeen, Washington. Cobain asked him to videotape one of their first songs, Paper Cut, after hours in the store. We had a, a camcorder set on a table. Um, our only special effects were the lights and so forth that were already in the store. Uh, I remember at one point uh, we were blowing cigarette smoke across <laughs> the camcorder to provide the, uh, the heavy metal smoke effect. This is the never-before-seen video that Eric recorded. Even then, Cobain's unique rebellious sound was emerging. He was 21 years old and had no idea of what the future held for him and the members of his band. Papercut was later released on Nirvana's first album, Bleach, on a small independent Seattle record label. When Harder heard of Cobain's death and saw the pictures of Kurt and Courtney's two-year-old daughter, Frances Bean, Eric was moved to find the video and offer it to the mourning widow. Wow, what a neat thing. See, you know, here's your dad when, when things were just starting. And, and, and this, was, this was before anything had an opportunity to, to lay a hand on him and change who he was yet. Who he was was a very troubled young man, battling drug addiction and depression. His suicide last week was preceded by an unsuccessful attempt at taking his life while he and Courtney were in Rome in March. My best conclusion would be that it was something that he had to do. If he had no means of letting this out, if he had no means of expressing himself, uh, I think he would just explode. I mean, to keep it all in all the time, that's uh, that heavy emotion, that's, that's almost impossible. It was late Monday night when Harder encountered Courtney Love walking with a friend outside the house where Cobain shot himself. Her grief was evident in her quivering lip. It's a letter just explaining why I'd like to give you the tape. I have kids, and as a father, I think it'd be really cool if my kids could have something like this tape shows. What is it? just us climbing around, making a video back before is everything it happened. Is it his neck all red? No, Where no is it's it earlier than that. It's down in Aberdeen. Were you in the band? <laughs> Were you one of the 80,000 drummers? <laughs> no. No, it's just a friend. And uh, we cleared all the stuff off my Radio Shack store and, uh, and did a video. It was, it was really cool. It was right after they got out of the, uh, um, the studio to record their first tape. Well, all right, see. Thank you. Can give it to one of those guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. 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 So for Courtney and little Frances Bean, the memory of Kurt Cobain will be a little bit fuller because of the kindness of a stranger. And tragically, a fan who attended the memorial service for Kurt Cobain also committed suicide a short time later. This is a phone number that may help young people who are depressed. It's Boys Town's national hotline, 1-800-448-3000. That's 1-800-448-3000. More for you on American Journal when we come back.